What separates a fighter and athlete is that uh, just the will to win. Um, a lot of fighters, they, they're also not scared to take a punch. Uh, where athletes, sometimes they take a punch and sometimes they, they don't like that. So um, they have a tendency kind of, they don't like when, it, uh, when it's really, really rough and uh, when there's pain, they kind of try to avoid that. Um, but a, a real true fighter, it doesn't matter what's in front of him, even if his nose is busted, he's bleeding or whatever it is, he just wants to win. And that desire to win, that was separates a fighter from an athlete. What does it take to be a fighter? To answer questions from my family who just don't understand. What does it take? To change the perception of who I was to the man I am today. What does it take? To never give up, even though I have every reason to. What does it take? To train every day, even though my body's screaming at me to quit. What does it take? To come back from an injury that the doctors told me would end my career. So, what does it take to be an MMA fighter? What do you think? Misha Serkinov is a Latvian fighter training out of Extreme Couture. He holds a professional record of seven wins and two losses and has won six out of his last seven fights. Prior to competing in mixed martial arts, Misha was involved in other combat sports. The main thing about mixed martial arts, what got me interested was uh, I started as a competitor, as an amateur practitioner of judo. And I've been doing judo for quite some time. Um, up until I went to high school and then when I went to high school um, I started doing uh, wrestling on top of judo and uh, it was kind of a little different transition because it was no I didn't have a gi it was uh, just a singlet and wrestling shoes and you had to put your opponent down on the ground and I thought that was a really cool sport and I uh, stuck with it and one day I knew that I'm going to be like a high level athlete and either judo, wrestling, whatever it is, I knew I'm going to be in a, high, a higher stage, either Olympic Games or uh, World Championships. Um, I knew that's, that's my passion and I just stick with it. The building blocks for a successful fighter, is, there are quite a few actually. Uh, number one is uh, a will uh, to win and uh, that's number one is you have to have a competitive personality where you're willing to compete against kind of anybody, uh, even, even though they might be tougher than you, bigger than you, um, you're still down to fight. And that's what's going to separate you big time from uh, people that choose, have a tendency to have a different weight class or et cetera. And uh, so number one is a willing to, to be in a fight. Uh, number two, number three, number four, there's many. There's, you have to have good boxing, you have to have good wrestling, you have to have Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you have to have kickboxing. Uh, having just one or two or three these days is not enough, especially if you want to go on a, on a higher stage on a different level, because it's just a matter of time when somebody's going to expose your weakness. And the only thing they're going to do, they're going to use the weakness against you. So pretty much, if you don't have any wrestling, most likely they'll put you on your back and you're going to be there for the rest of the fight. So that's not really the way you want to fight. So, I mean, you have to be a, a complete, uh, complete martial artist these days. If you want to fight against tough fighters, you have to have everything. Wrestling, jiu-jitsu, boxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, uh, judo, you name it. The more you know, the better. Misha's family moved to Canada in 2000 from Riga, Latvia. Seeking a better life, Misha's parents moved to Toronto, bringing along a 13-year-old Misha 
and his brother. I came to Canada when I was 13 years old, um, and uh, my, my parents, they wanted to have a better future for me and my brother, and uh, they decided to, to come to Canada to, to have a better, a better opportunities and better future for, for me and my brother and just our family in general. And uh, when I was 13, we, our, our, all, all our family, we just we came to Canada. My brother is always happy like, to see me win, to see me compete, to see me perform. Uh, my mom, she's, uh, she's also very supportive. I mean, of course, my parents, that, that was not the first kind of the first uh, profession that they would pick and choose for me. It just, it just ended up being that way, just how everything turned out when I came to Canada. But uh, they're still supportive. They, uh, they watch all my fights and they encourage me and, you know, they're, they're really supportive. My brother, he, he doesn't really train. He's more, he's actually completely opposite from me. He's more interested in like, computers and technology, uh, stuff like that. He doesn't really train at all. He's still in a pretty good shape, you know, but uh, he just have different interests. When he was younger, he was doing judo as well because judo was really, really popular in Latvia. We had a really, really good uh, uh, national team there. Um, but when we came to Canada, he kind of sticked with what he was good at, uh, his computers. So that's what he does. But he still supports me, and you know, he would always likes to hear me talk about fighting, and sometimes he would check out my fights. I don't really uh, kind of encourage my, my parents and my brother to watch the fights live, you know, just because I know they're, they really, you know, they worry about me a lot, so I don't want to put that extra stress on them. I take all the stress on myself. When Sirkinov moved to Canada, he was exposed to many other forms of martial arts to go with his judo background. For a fighter who is constantly trying to improve, having some of the best teachers in the world might not have been available in Latvia. I think being in Canada just kind of definitely speed up the, the knowledge that I received in terms of, uh, for example, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is way more um, popular and way more uh, uh, stronger in North America rather than in Europe. Don't get me wrong, there's still always amazing practitioners anywhere in the world and some guys on any given day they can beat other guys. So, But overall the, the skill in North America is pretty high so I, I when I came to Canada I was kind of exposed to many different opportunities to just keep learning and uh, that's that's what I did I kind of like start learning the skill and I, I really like learning and receiving new information and then trying it on the mat for me it's like really uh, exciting The biggest challenge in Misha's life was his move to Canada at 13 years old. Not only having to adapt to a new country and culture, the challenges of school and socializing with his peers, Misha had to learn to communicate in a language he did not know. You know, one of the biggest challenges, I guess, that I experienced was actually uh, coming from a different country and um, just learning a new language and meeting new friends and because English was not my second language it was my third language so it was kind of a little bit I thought that you know I already know two languages and I don't want to learn English and I was just being very depressed and pulling yourself out from being really depressed and having nobody to support you really it's like that was the biggest thing that I, I was able to achieve on my own and throughout the sports it kind of helped me to do it big time because every time I would come first at some tournament, all of a sudden people that, you know, didn't really know me, they would just wanted to like shake my hand and just they wanted to get to know me just because I would I would win the gold medal, you know. So that kind of that gave me a little drive, and uh, um, I started kind of getting more people, you know, pe more people were interested in me, and uh, just that's how everything started, you know. When I was 13, I was really depressed. I had no uh, no English. I didn't have any friends. I, uh, I was pretty much, I felt like, even though my family was here, my brother was here, but I felt like I was kind of by myself, especially uh, because I had so many friends back home. And when I came to Canada, all of a sudden I have just nobody's my friend. And you kind of, you're on your own and you go to school and everyone speaks a different language that you kind of, 
you have no idea what they're saying, you know. So I felt a little bit kind of like left out. I was always, you know, in, for example, when I came to Canada, I was in grade eight, and uh, I was about 180 pounds in grade eight, and I was probably six one. So all the kids, they 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 were they were kind of confused. They they thought maybe I'm you know I'm supposed to be in grade ten, but they put me in grade eight because of my language. So it was we had some you know some interesting. Uh, funny kind of like, you know, um, incidents, especially like uh, at, at a dance. I remember uh, uh, this one girl, she wanted to dance with me, but, you know, I, I didn't want to dance with anybody. I didn't know her name. I, I was just want to do my own thing, but I had to be at the dance because everyone had to be there. And some people, you know, they, they just they start saying, oh, he might be gay, he might be this, he might be that. So, I, you know, there were some kind of like a little, you know, little kind of troubles here and there but overall the the kids they knew that I, I do judo and I'm big tough guy so kind of I always got respect everywhere I was even when I went to high school I was in grade nine I was kind of like the toughest guy in, in high school in grade nine compared to like anybody who was in high school so I, I, just in grade nine pretty much the whole high school knew who I was so I kind of like you know I, I met a lot of people throughout the sports I um, I kind of he opened many many doors in terms of the first judo club what I went to and I those the smell of the mats and the smell of the sweat and the those old geese it, it was actually the same exact smell as I experienced back home so as soon as I walked into the gym I I almost had tears you know I, like it was like I was back home so every time I step on a mat it was kind of like my house you know so it doesn't matter even though um, some guys would throw me and submit me. It doesn't matter. I just felt it was like a comfort zone where I felt really, really good. So that's why I kind of like, I, I, I stick with it. You know, every time I felt a little bit depressed or whatever it was, I, I would just go to the gym. Misha now trains with some of the best fighters in the world. Many of his daily training partners are familiar to Hard Knocks fans. Training with guys like uh, Elias Theodoro, Sergei Iskevich, uh, Ryan Dixon, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, it's people that are interested in the same, same thing what I do and they step up and they take their game on a pretty high level. So it's, you know, it's fun to be part of that because uh, I am also one of those guys who wants to go on a higher level and having all those guys that I just mentioned is, is amazing, you know, I wish uh, there were even more guys like that, you know, um, but we have to work with what we have and uh, having those guys, it's, 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 it's a blessing. The main thing what drives you uh, better is seeing the other guys compete and seeing uh, other fighters compete on a bigger stage and seeing uh, elite fighters do what they do and seeing how they do it and what they do. Um, that kind of sets the drive and makes you kind of change certain things and makes you want to work harder and sometimes you can see what they do and a lot of times what it is is just you copy and paste you see a good material uh, if you copy and paste and you're going to have a good material so as long as you adapt and you learn you should be in a in in, in a good seat misha's opponent for this fight is american rodney wallace with a record of 22 wins and nine losses the former USC fighter is currently ranked as the number one light heavyweight competing in Canada. This will be a huge test for Serkinov. I started in MMA probably in uh, 08. Well, I started fighting in 08. I started training in jiu-jitsu probably 06 or something like that. And um, after jiu-jitsu, you know, I got my first fight. And when I started fighting, I, I was traveling immediately. I was off to Spain and uh, off to different countries and I didn't really stay still and uh, did a tournament, uh, uh, eight-man tournament in Aruba, and I won the tournament. After that, uh, UFC called me, told me to come fight for him. So it's been, a, it's been a journey ever since. Now I'm about 32 fights in, something like that. So I'm just looking to, to stay busy and, and stay active and, and keep showing that I'm, I'm at the top level. I'm excited to fight for a title, man. Like, any time that you could, you could put a belt around your waist and say, you know, I was the king. I was the king at this time and this point of era, you know, it's good. And, and everybody, they got to reach for you. So you're just not a guy in the organization. You are the guy of the organization, if you will. So anybody that, that want to be at the top, they got to see me. 
you know, hopefully we got a lot of hungry guys in, in Canada or wherever they want to come from that, that want to be at the top because I'm going to be here waiting probably forever. Fighting against somebody um, like Rodney Wallace, uh, who is a really experienced fighter, he has many, many, many fights, um, many good finishes, many good wins. It's, it's exciting, you know, it's exciting because he is that person on that level uh, who is an um, amazing fighter and who is very durable and he proved himself to be a durable guy and an amazing fighter. So for me, fighting against somebody like that, that's exactly what I need in order to show everybody that I can last with guys like that and not just last, but I can, you know, perform. And uh, that's exactly what I'm looking forward to do. I, I'm, I'm actually excited to be here. Uh, hard knocks, you know. I, I can't wait to show Hard Knocks and the whole Canada what I came here to do. You know, I'm very excited. This school of Hard Knocks fight is our main event. It is a professional title fight in the light heavyweight division. And now, let's see the fighters. In the blue corner, he's 7-2 as a professional, 28 years old, and stands 6 feet, 3 inches tall. He weighed in at 205 pounds, fighting out of extreme couture from Toronto. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Misha! His opponent in the red corner, he's 22, 9 and 1 as a professional, 33 years old, and stands 5 feet, 9 inches tall. He weighed in at 204 and 1 half pounds, fighting out of Team Rock from Charlotte, North Carolina. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Rodney Jonah the Master. Hey gentlemen, we've gone over the rules. This is for the Hard Knocks lightweight, sorry, light heavyweight title. Obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. If you don't want to touch gloves, do so now. Come out ready to fight. So it's Misha Serkinov out of the blue corner in the black trunks, the green trunks for Rodney Wallace out of the red corner. The light heavyweight title is on the line here as these two 205 pound fighters look to make a statement and win the Hard Knocks title for the very first time. Oh, that was a big shot and a big kick and Rodney kick. Wallace is in trouble and he is out. This fight is over, Misha Serkinov your hard knocks lightweight champ or light heavyweight champion a huge head kick followed by a, 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 a very impressive knockout sequence the winner by knockout at two minutes in the very first round and our new light heavyweight champion misha Sarkanov. i was ready for five rounds i've been training extremely hard i take uh, fighting very serious now and uh, I was able to finish him in a, in a first round. With uh, first, I, uh, I I I showed some some of my boxing. I showed I let him know that I can throw some bombs. And then uh, when his attention went to my uh, to my hands and my boxing, then I wanted to start uh, throwing some kicks. And one of the kicks landed right on his head. I guess we both came out slow. In the um, that was pretty much the story of it. Like we both came out slow and. I wanted to see how I wanted to gauge how fast he was, and he threw a couple of punches, and it really, it really wasn't fast to me. So I got a little bit more aggressive and started throwing punches, and he ducked under my punches and and uh, tried to push up into the cage a couple of times. And the one time he ducked under it, I pushed back off of him, and next thing you know, I'm looking up. I I trained very, very hard, and the game plan was actually take it into the third round and. 
in the third round, I was going to um, start pushing the RPMs. You know, in the, in the third round, I was ready to start uh, kind of like going for the finish. Uh, and first uh, and second round, I was just going to uh, dance around and because uh, Rodney is a very heavy puncher, you know, so I, I didn't want to kind of go into exchanges, but I sometimes I end, underestimate myself, so I, I can swing with anybody, you know. I felt comfortable, you know. Um, I thought he was going to be a little bit more aggressive, which would have made it easier for me to counter, but he was real patient and uh, which was cool. When he was throwing his punches, they weren't nothing fast, and I could tell that he was. He was a little bit worried that he wouldn't touch me with anything. And uh, so I started to get a little bit aggressive. When I got aggressive, I backed up, which I, I told myself not to do in the fight, but I backed up and he hit me with a head kick, which was unconventional in my, in my head for him, so I wasn't really worried about that. You know, stepping into the cage and fighting Rodney Wallace, it was obviously, you know, I was a little bit intimidated, but at the same time, you know, my coach, and my training partners, they kept telling me that, you know, that you, you're a beast, you know, like you shouldn't be worried about anybody. You, you did all the work and, you know, that kind of kept me going. And um, just, you know, I know Rodney, he fought in UFC, he fought, you know, many tough guys. And uh, he'd been going to decisions with, with guys like Phil Davis, you know. But honestly, like, you know, I'm not really a talker, but I'll fight anybody. You know? I'll fight really anybody. With a big win over a former UFC opponent, as well as being the Hard Knocks light heavyweight champion, Misha is still near the beginning of his journey. You know, where I want to end up with MMA is uh, obviously I want to fight on the big, uh, biggest stage. When I was uh, young, I always wanted to go to Olympic Games, but when I got a little bit older, and uh, all my interests changed a little bit. And for me personally, going to UFC, uh, it's a bigger accomplishment than uh, make it Canadian like Olympic team. So for me, uh, being in UFC is definitely where I want to end up and uh, not just end up there, but show the world what I can do at UFC as well.